our Sunday long run again. It's the 5th of March. Yeah, it's nice and cool this morning. Uh, I missed a run this week. It's my midweek session run. Uh, my ankles, they were really tight. They were tight on Tuesday. Actually, it was Wednesday. I went for my first run back on Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if it was because of the long run I did on Sunday. It was my longest run so far. I think it was 13k, did I say? But I feel like I've been building up to it steadily. I've not jumped too quick. I've been doing a bit of strength training mobility work. Maybe I need to uh, spend some more time doing that and actually focus on ankles a little bit more. Last thing I want is an injury when I feel like I'm actually making some good progress. So yeah, I missed my long run. No, it wasn't my long run my session run. I was planning on doing a threshold, that take threshold run. And Strava at the moment are giving you everything for free, like a, a free insight as to what you'd get if you were to pay for the subscription. So it kind of gave me my heart rate zones, which was nice. Thanks Strava, still don't intend on paying for a subscription at the moment, it's just not in my budget. Talking about budget, I uh, diverting a little bit, I've gone out and bought a watch eventually, it hasn't arrived yet, should be here this week sometime, or next week sometime. Uh, but yeah, I went for the Coros Pace 2. Again, to do with budget, it's quite a cheap watch in comparison to pretty much all of the other watches on the market. They're like from £300 upwards. And this one was 175 179 And it's got a lot of features packed into it, more than what I need. So... I feel like it'll do the job nicely for me. So, I've got a bit of a conundrum with myself today. Because I missed my midweek session, do I add those kilometers to this session to essentially make up for what I've missed? Or, but then that kind of puts me again at an added risk of coming out with sore ankles. But what I could do is, if I do have the sore ankles, go home, make sure I ice them, do foam rolling, stretch them out, compress them, have an Epsom salt bath and then go from there, or do I play it safe and just keep the mileage a little bit within the same range as like last week, 10 to 13 kilometers. I don't know, we see how I feel. We're around four and a quarter, four and a half kilometers in and the ankles are feeling okay at the minute. I did spend a little bit extra time warming them up this morning because I thought it might be a problem. Another thing I've done because of my ankles is I put myself in for a, a gait analysis. I'm just curious as to see if it's the way that I'm running that might be causing an issue. I, 
Maybe I've got a gammy foot or something. <laughs> so 5k, average pace, 6.49 I think it just said. Literally just said it and forgot it. But yeah, maybe it's something to do with the way my feet are. So I heard there's a, is it pronating? Or something, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm going to someone who knows what they're talking about. They can analyze the way they run. Tell me if I'm wearing the right shoes. Well, I already kind of know I'm not. But <laughs> I went out and I bought a pair of trainers last year because they were on sale. And I thought, huh, they were supposed to be 200 pounds. That must mean they're like the best running trainers, right? But they probably are. If you're racing, <laughs> they're the Saucony Endorphin Pro. So they've got a carbon plate in them. So all these easy miles I'm doing, I don't really think I'm supposed to be using them for that purpose. I mean, maybe that's what's causing my ankles to hurt. With that extra carbon torsion pushing back up. I don't know. I ain't got a clue. Why do I act like I know what I'm talking about? I ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> but maybe it's the shoes. I've been looking into other pairs, but again, it's just budget. Trainers are pretty expensive as well nowadays. That's I know me look for like the last year's colorways because they're a lot cheaper sorry i'm just looking in the distance there's a crow fighting with a red tail kite <laughs> let's see if we can stop and see it the crows don't like them going into their territory so they scare them off crows are pretty hardy bastards go again. I mean the kite's bigger as well you think you'd have a bit more of an edge but they're not actually predatory hunters they're uh, scavengers they just pick up just pick up the dead I don't know mice voles whatever's on the floor anyway, I've gone off track again I don't know what I was saying trainers that was it so yeah tend to pick up the previous year's colorways on the sales because i can't be affording almost 200 quid for a pair of trainers i mean yeah it's a lot of money especially in this uh I'm like this climate we're in at the minute everything everything's going up in it your bills your petrol your food and trainers just don't seem like a necessity that I need to spend that sort of money on so if I can find a cheaper option that's just good then that'll do me Right, so we're almost seven kilometers in now and I've committed to it I'm gonna run further my ankles are feeling good so I'm gonna trust it I'm gonna trust my body I listened to my body when it was hurting and I rested a few extra days I'm listening to my body now and it feels good so I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna push it. Madden on this extra little loop around the Danish camp. Don't know how much it'll push it up to, but it'll be more than the 13k that I did last week, so my longest run yet. Yeah. And if it starts to hurt, I'll just slow down and walk. To say I was quite apprehensive about coming out this morning, 8k in 
I'm actually uh, enjoying myself. I don't want to stop. Not that I'm, I don't know if I'm halfway or what yet, but yeah, I just want to go further. I haven't come this far out before. Yeah, still feeling comfortable. I think it's something a lot of people struggle with is that initial feeling. Oh, I don't want to go out today. And I, even if they don't admit it, I'm pretty sure everyone has that. Like every now and again. I imagine even some pro athletes will have those type of feelings some days you know not everyone's on top form every day it takes quite a lot to overcome them feelings and well done to you if you've been overcoming those doubts that you have and you've been getting out there on the road that's the way you improve beating those doubts or fears getting out and improving yourself even if it's not the run you thought it was going to be if it's not it didn't go great in your eyes you got out there and you did something and that's that's the main thing isn't it you're getting out there and moving you're making a decision to better yourself you've actually gone out there and done it 9k in now so I've got to a point where I roughly know how far I've got to go back now. Uh, I've done just over 12 kilometers and I know from this point it's about six kilometers home. So that's about 18 kilometers in total. We'll see when we get there. But yeah, still feeling good. Ankle's still feeling good. This is running nice and slow. My average pace around 640, 6.50 per kilometre although some of the last kilometres I've just ran are like 6.20, 6.30 not very good yet at judging and keeping that pace the same throughout I mean maybe it's to do with elevation the slight elevations or, or it's a slight downhill I don't know but I don't seem to be very good at judging and keeping that pace consistent. Right, I set of hit 18 kilometers. We'll stop that. So we've done 18 kilometers, just over two hours. Ankles don't feel too bad at all actually, but it will stick some ice on them when I get home. Uh, take some ibuprofen. But 18.2 kilometers, 6.42 pace, two hour, one minute. All right. So, 13 achievements. Longest activity on Strava. Two hour, one minute, 18 kilometers, not bad. Got me a watch coming some point next week so should be that should be working should be wearing that next week that might help me pace a little bit better because i can keep an eye a bit easier but yeah see you on the next one